With all the leaks about Christian Horner's proclivities, and the appointment of the independent council, it appeared that key players at Red Bull headquarters in Austria, were ushering him out of the door at Red Bull Racing, before someone, stepped in at the last minute to boost his drive to survive. Somehow, Christian has temporarily survived a month-long, supposedly independent investigation, that started at the beginning of February, into a sexual harassment complaint that was reportedly made in December. After reviewing a dossier of incriminating material, and grilling the accused for eight hours, the investigation concluded with the announcement of Horner's acquittal in a short 89-word statement. The brevity of the counterfactual statement, expectedly raised numerous red flags and more questions than 50 cent, about what it takes for a woman to prove a case of sexual harassment in the F1 workplace, and at Red Bull in particular. One other main question was, what prompted the dramatic turnaround within Red Bull? Before addressing some of these questions, we invite those of you who haven't yet done so, to like, comment, subscribe, click the notification icon, and share this video. The appointment of the independent council, indicated that some at Red Bull, were looking to get rid of Christian, in the wake of the allegations. The steady leaking of damning information about Horner's guilt also supported this notion. But, we cautioned that, with the toxic masculine culture at Red Bull, it was more than likely that, Horner, would not be the only one guilty of sexually harassing female employees, and he would threaten to take others down with him. So, Red Bull were on the horns of a dilemma, because, if he should go, it would be trouble and if he should stay, it will be double. Cover-ups are usually characterized by opaque processes wrapped up in short, vague pronouncements, just like the 89-word statement, dismissing the three-month-old complaint, which in the third month, had prompted the appointment of an independent council. The fact that the independent council reached this decision, after reviewing a painstakingly compiled dossier, containing over 100 pieces of evidence, and interviewing Christian for at least eight hours, is just astonishing. What would Richard Nixon, have given for such counsel? It would appear that, against the odds, a third party successfully intervened to save Christian from his enemies within Red Bull, because, Horner appeared to be a goner, from the time critical information about the complaint was leaked to the Dutch newspaper, who publicized it on the 5th of February. Red Bull responded with a vague statement acknowledging the existence of the complaint and announcing the appointment of an independent counsel to investigate the allegations. This of course raised the question of what Red Bull did between December, when the complaint was made, and February, when the news broke. The two obvious conclusions are that, Red Bull were either sitting on the complaint, and were forced into action after the news leaked, or their initial review had concluded that, there were grounds for bringing in an independent council. Whatever the case, appointing an independent council, would not be part of any company's standard process. A complaint would only merit such an appointment, if it was substantive, and under exceptional circumstances. The Dutch news outlet that broke the story, also later reported that, the complainant alleged sexual harassment, and provided a dossier of material, including over 100 pieces of evidence, some dating back over a prolonged period. Critically, the outlet also reported that Horner's £650,000 offer to settle the claim was rejected. It should be noted that, as at the time of this video, neither Red Bull nor Horner, have threatened or initiated any legal action against the Dutch news source. Coincidentally, as the investigation was unfolding, Netflix was preparing to air the sixth season of its Formula One-based Drive to Survive series, which was focused on the Horners. The drama surrounding Christian was helping to boost the profile of the series, but, a conviction and his exit from Red Bull would undoubtedly have jeopardized its future. Can Netflix afford the reputational damage that will come from featuring Christian Horner, while he is facing serious allegations of sexual harassment, which may be confirmed at a later date? So, you make of that what you will, and share your views in the comment section. Critically, in its opening statement, Red Bull had advised that it would not be commenting further on the matter, as it would not be appropriate while the investigation was ongoing. In their closing statement they advised that, in the interest of the confidentiality of the parties involved, they would not be commenting further. So, beyond acquitting Horner, 
Red Bull had not much else to say. Classic cover-up brevity. The acquittal freed Horner to carry on business as usual, with Red Bull and Netflix, while the general public, and female Red Bull employees in particular, are left wondering what type of evidence passes the standard for sexual harassment in the workplace. Worse yet, a fresh batch of texts and photos from the investigation have since been leaked to the media. So, despite the acquittal, the scandal will continue to rumble, and will eventually be overtaken by the cover-up, as always happens. Red Bull and Formula One appear to have shot themselves in the foot yet again. So, who do you guys think had the motive, means and opportunity to fuel Christian's drive to survive the Red Bull civil war? Answers in the comments section please.